Welcome back. We're on deep into the wiring of my Rans S21 airplane. Um, first, a disclaimer. Uh, I'm a first-time builder, so none of my videos are instructional, and that's pretty clear. Um, in this episode, I continue the wiring uh, behind the firewall. I hook up the ELT and the ELT RS-232 cable, the fuel pump wiring. Uh, I install the low fuel warning light and the wiring for that. And then also the wiring for the trim, trim servo, um, and the trim indicator gauge. So with that, let's just jump into the ELT. I decided to uh, zip tie my ELT siren or horn to the cage frame underneath uh, the panel. This way, one, it's got a short cord to the uh, ELT panel mount. Two, I've got to get access to it every 10 years to switch the batteries out, so I didn't want to make it completely inaccessible. So with just cutting these zip ties, I can drop it down, replace the batteries, and then the rear cord goes to the back. This also keeps it out of the way from the feet and the legs uh, that will, the co-pilot or the passenger would have. While I'm waiting for that uh, one amp breaker to show up to finish up uh, those wires for the USB and the trim, I thought I'd finish the ELT connection. Uh, there's an RS-232 cable that comes from the panel that I guess allows the ELT to get GPS information. And based on your configuration, there's a couple different ways it gets hooked up, but this is the basic four-wire hookup. They give you this little connector and four wire connectors that need to get soldered. Here's the pattern. So I'll just take the 232 cable and start assigning them to pins and soldering them on. Uh, and in soldering these, it looked like I dripped a piece of solder down and connected two of the lugs, which would have been a pain. Uh, and I tried to melt it off and I, without melting the plastic in here. Uh, and I carefully, and then I took a little poker and got the solder out, but I was worried that I had created a connection between the two uh, bars. So I, I took my meter for continuity and I checked all the bars to make sure that nothing was, was uh, signaling to the other, and they all seem clear. Now they tell you to run a test wire and a test on all the connections, and I'll do that. Okay, I've tested the RS-232 connection. Everything seems to be working fine. At this point, I unplugged it, and now I'm going to put this plastic cap around it. And they say to fill it with RTV silicone. So we're filling it all in here, I guess, to give it to support and also to keep any of the connections from touching each other after it's installed. Then this cap will slide down over on top of uh, the plastic clamps that are also filled with RTV. And uh, when you finish, you get your plug looking like this. The cap goes on. You clean up some of the silicone that squishes out. And I put a... Uh, zip tie on the, the lines leading in and that's my ELT plug. Okay, as I'm attaching my antennas and, and running my wires, some quick learnings that I came up or figured out and did some research on and talked to some people. The back of the G3X, you've got an uh, antenna connector down there that's marked uh, GPS. You have an antenna connection on the back of the G5. Then you also, on the back of the transponder GPS, the GNX375, you've got a, uh, a mount here that if you read carefully is marked transponder. And this one over here, if you read in here, it's marked GPS. What I've learned is that you do hook up your GPS and transponder to the GNX375. Uh, this is used when you don't have the transponder uh, the GNX375 and the G5 does not need an antenna, it will get its information from the G3. Uh, the other thing I ran into is this transponder connection is the uh, twist turn TNC connection or a BNC. This GPS is not a BNC, it's the old screw type. And here is my GPS antenna wire of which I put a BNC connector on. Uh, you can get adapters to switch it, but you lose efficiency, and this is too important an instrument. So I've got enough extra cable, so I'm going to cut this and uh, put on the TNC screw mount for the GPS. 
Okay, I just put together a small 8-gauge jumper wire over to my frame to ground the bus. Remember, this is that pass-through bolt, that stainless steel pass-through bolt that comes through and then grounds my bus underneath. Okay, I think I can fire up the panel. I found the, uh, the positive lead off the panel to the ground bus, to the starter solenoid. Starter solenoid, come back to the battery. Battery's connected. Ground goes through to the frame. Starter ground is grounded. I think we're good. I think we're good. We'll start with the ma battery master. Garmin came alive. Let's go avionics master. G5 came alive. G3 came alive. I can put avionics master on. Radios are coming alive. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So cool. Well, it's got my transponder 1200, COM 1's at 1180, Vampires 136.975, magnetometer not calibrated. All map and terrain provided. COM2 is lit up, 118, 136. The GNX375, the GPS, that's lit up. We've got our COM, our controller, autopilot, G5. Wow, first time lit up. It's pretty exciting, pretty exciting. Uh, my friend Anton from EAA recommended that I safety tie these down. These could pop up. In theory, there's a floor here, but safety tying them down. And this one's on the side because if it was up here, it was going to get in the way with the floor. So I had to drill holes and safety tie this one. So they're both safety tied. In the process of sorting and connecting wires, I am labeling things. I got this Brother P-Touch on the recommendation of some people online wasn't that expensive and it does a pretty good job these are these uh uh kind of uh acrylic labels they're pretty good i also got a cartridge that prints the uh, heat shrink but you really can't use these unless you've got 14 or 16 gauge or larger they don't work really well in the small wires so these these seem to work well so but getting everything labeled okay i connected my fuel pump wires uh, this is the positive that came from the harness and the negative I am running back to my ground bus, my rear ground bus off the battery. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, install this low fuel warning light into the panel. I have to cut another hole in the panel, but I guess that's all part of it. I hate touching that beautiful panel, but that's what I have to do. There's a schematic in the book in the, uh, I think it's in the firewall forward engine section but it's figure section 11 there's a diagram for it okay i've got my low fuel gauge light in i'll put a, a tag up there later how i hook this up is this is a, uh, a completion of a negative circuit of a ground circuit so i just went uh, with one connection to my ground bus on the battery the other one goes up to the light bulb then in the front uh, you can see I've got my connection here and I ran a positive wire off the terminal over to my circuit breakers to the USB uh, circuit breaker. Uh, the next thing I'm going to work on is going to be the trim servo. Uh, off the harness that I got from the panel company was a wire that is marked trim servo power. So this just gives me the power and then from the servo company I got this five strand wire and two of them have got to be power so then I've also got the trim servo box which I dug back up from my earlier installation of um, the wire and my servos in here and then the instructions here for hooking up the wiring uh, I hate cutting another hole in the panel but you've got this trim indicator uh, display that needs to go into the panel so I'm 
it's got a little I don't have it with me it's got a little cover that goes on it and this comes through um, so we'll cut the panel and get that installed okay on this uh, trim servo indicator trim indicator and servo I think I've got this figured out it looks like the orange blue and green come up to my indicator and the gray and white go to the switch the trim switch which is actually in my control stick so here is the wire coming back from the servo from the tail and my gray and white everything connects to the indicator except the gray and the white which if I follow this back it looks like I've got to cut it off somewhere back here at least the gray and the white and hook up to my control stick and then the other three come all the way through to my indicator so that looks like how I'm going to hook this up okay so what I did is very very carefully opened up this wire found my white and gray made a slice about a foot and a half in front of my stick and then I came down I pulled my white and gray oh I cut the white and gray up here and then pulled it out through a second opening down here again very very carefully so I make sure I didn't cut any of these tiny wires I think they're 22s maybe 20 gauge they're pretty small uh, and then pulled out my two uh, wires that I'll need for my trim control which is in the stick and then the rest of the wire runs up to the indicator so I think this will work uh, I'm finishing up this uh, trim indicator here's my indicator I cut the hole in the panel it comes with a nice little template to go over there and on the back side I've got it here uh, wiring comes out uh, into this zip tied mass and part goes to the ground and then I've got red power coming off which I think what I need is a um, one amp uh, breaker which I don't have so I think I'm going to put a breaker in down here um, with a one amp it's the uh, trim servo installation instructions say that the the rocker switch which is actually my control stick and the LED indicator can both be hooked up on the same one amp circuit breaker uh, for power uh, so what I'm doing over here is I've got my power from my trim indicator which goes right to the indicator in the panel and then I've got my power from my control stick both coming over here uh, I don't have a one amp breaker so I've got a spot right here I'm gonna put a one amp breaker and then if I jump it to this bus this power bus this only comes on when the uh, avionics is turned on this bus up here comes on when the masters turned on so I'm gonna run a jump wire from here down to this one amp so that uh, this one amp is uh, powered by the main not by the avionics switch uh, so I've ordered that that's coming in I got my wires ready to go and on this end uh, this is where I uh, pulled the wires from remember I cut the wire up top pulled out the gray and the white which are for the trim controller uh, which is in my grip of course uh, so all I did is I I brought these over and hooked them up to the wires that came out of my grip and that should be good other than tucking them away and running them better okay I put that uh, little one amp breaker in here I had upsized the hole to I think 7 16 to get that to fit in but it fit uh, then I've got the uh, a loop wire going from one terminal to my bus bar over here uh, which is connected to the master switch the bus bar right here is for the avionics and I wanted this to come on with my master switch so I connected to that bus and then here I've got the three uh, th th the stick power the trim indicator and the low light low fuel warning light uh, hooked up down here so that should take care of those I was uh, talking to my panel guy it's a good place to insert this and apparently this uh, trim indicator this Ray Allen trim indicator uh, is optional your G3 uh, has a trim indicator if you hook it up directly through the wiring the panel guy provided I already had hooked this up by the time I learned it and it's a nice, nice bright display and it's separate from my panel so I actually like this uh, but it's an option to hook this up apparently it can be done all through the panel 
Well, that's a, that's a good place to stop. Um, that section of bill took 23.2 hours. That brings my project to date to 906.1 hours. Uh, I'm certainly not fast when it comes to wiring, but I am double checking and going slow and making sure I'm doing it the best I can. Um, I'm almost finished with the wiring behind the firewall. In the next episode, I do the headphone jacks and some USB ports. And then I got good news from Rands. After more than two years, my uh, Titan engine is just about ready for delivery. So I'm excited to take a break from the wiring and then start working on the engine. That should be here pretty soon, uh, which will definitely be part of maybe my next video. So with that, thanks very much for watching. And remember, dream it, just build it.